This sign splits Chickasaw County in half with one side being dry and the other side being wet. I'm Jory Talley and I'll have that story. WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone. A nationwide move to cut, cut 6,000 jobs in the federal prison system is having an impact here at home. At least 40 of those positions being cut are at the Women's Correctional Facility across the state line in Aliceville. This decision comes as a result of the Department of Justice cutting the budget for all federal prisons. Union President Terrence Wyndham tells us more than half those cuts are correctional officer positions. Wyndham says the cuts could prove to be dangerous because that will mean fewer workers are watching over the 1,400 inmates at the facility. Losing those 40 jobs is going to mean that there's a deep increase in the in the uh, in the uh, the ability for us to respond adequately to problems that go on in the institution. There's going to be an increase in um, things that we can't really see as far as the. Uh, um, like I said, the response time and just putting us in a dangerous position that the inmates know, hey, they have a decreased number now. So if there was a time to attack, this is the time. Wyndham says it is unclear at this time if workers facing layoffs will be allowed to transfer to other facilities. However, he does say more cuts are expected. Fewer than half of Mississippi counties are dry counties, and in four of those, they're half dry and half wet. Chickasaw County happens to be split right down the middle. In most counties, municipalities are usually dry or wet, with the entire county being dry. But there's a unique situation in Chickasaw County. Our Jory Talley joins us in the studio to try to sort it all out for us. Jory. In one half of Chickasaw County, you can buy and sell beer and liquor. And on the other side, it's illegal. However, on the wet side, only liquor is legal outside of the city limit. In this picture, the yellow shows half of Chickasaw County being dry. The blue shows the areas that are wet. Chickasaw County Sheriff James Myers says it's been that way for years. I think back years ago it was it was probably voted on in the city limits of Oklahoma and approved. Uh, other Houston, other towns like Hulka, Houston, uh, it has been brought up, but it never did pass. Uh, I just think uh, the uh, the voting base in that in that jurisdiction. Uh, doesn't, doesn't want it. Chickasaw County is a little unique because it has two judicial districts, which are Houston and Okalona. And this creek is the dividing line between the two. I'm on the dividing line of Houston and Okalona. On this side of the bridge, you can't buy beer or liquor. But if you walk on over to this side of the bridge, which is now Okalona, you can buy both. On the second judicial district side, which is the Okalona side, uh, beer and whiskey is legal in the city limits of Okalona. But possession of whiskey is legal to the to the district line, which is Sukatanchi. So it's a, a little confusing. The confusion leads to citations, which the sheriff says are handed out several times throughout the year. People can come to an event, say out in the county, and they come through Oklahoma and they purchase alcohol. And uh, you know, if they come over to the Houston side, I mean, technically it, it's against the law. You can only find alcohol at stores inside the Oklahoma city limits, like Dodger Store. We don't sell until one o'clock on Sundays, so at one o'clock we'll be lined up, and then you know they'll come this way and get their beer, and then head back across the county line. Store leader Becky D. Priest says the store places beer orders five times a week and couldn't imagine not selling it. She says beer, gas, chicken, and cigarettes are the store's biggest profit. If we don't have those things, we don't sell the rest of these things. So those are the four things that we have to have all the time, or we won't be able to sell peanuts and chips and, you know, slushies and stuff, because that doesn't sell as much as those four items do. Jasper, Jones, and Hines counties are the three other counties that are half dry and half wet. We spoke to some Houston residents and convenience stores earlier today who didn't want to be on camera, but they talked to us about alcohol being legal in some parts of the county and illegal in some areas. And they told us it's been a long time since their area has been wet, dry rather, and they would be opposed to changing it. All right, Jory in our studio. I think I need a drink after trying to figure all that out. And I don't drink. 
All right, Mississippi lawmakers could allow visitors to buy alcohol directly from distilleries. The House Ways and Means Committee has approved House Bill 995, sending it to the full House for debate. The bill is sponsored by Representative Jeff Smith from Columbus. It would allow visitors to buy liquor at distilleries but not drink it on site. However, the measure says the distiller has to buy the alcohol from the Department of Revenue's Alcoholic Beverage Control Warehouse in Madison County. What that means is the distillery would have to make the alcohol, ship it to the state, and then buy it back. Tupelo is rolling forward with its efforts to bring a transit system to town. Last October, the city sent out requests for proposals to see which companies would be interested in teaming up with the city. Tomorrow, leaders will hear from uh, Climb Up Incorporated. The service would run on two fixed routes, including the city's busiest traveled areas, like around Walmart, Kroger, and the uh, ICC Belden campus. Climb Up Incorporated will have to submit a bid of just over $262,000. Contract would be for 18 months if approved. Time now to turn our attention to weather. Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson joins us with a first look at your forecast. Hey, Joy, right now we are looking at clear, quiet conditions in the city of Columbus, actually. 606, some spots have a few more clouds and some spots a little bit cooler. Look at that. Tupelo 39 for you, 39 for you in Winona, but still 48 in the Columbus area. Colder air coming on down with these northwest winds. They've been gusting to about 25 miles per hour here, and there's a little band of clouds with those, but those will thin out later tonight. So for this evening, 40s and 30s, and then later tonight down into the mid to upper 20s. A chilly one out there. Your full forecast in just a few minutes. A Tupelo firefighter is out of the hospital after being injured while trying to put out a blaze early this morning. Fire crews were called to this home on Church and Walker Streets just after 8.30. Fire Chief Thomas Walker says no one was inside at the time of the blaze. A firefighter fell while fighting the fire. The fireman is in good spirits but sore tonight. The cause of the blaze remains under investigation. Narcotics agents seized 38 pounds of marijuana in Columbus. Now two men are facing drug charges. 39-year-old Aaron Dumas is charged with trafficking marijuana along with conspiracy to possess or distribute marijuana and conspiracy to commit a crime. 27-year-old LaShawn Harris is charged with trafficking marijuana and conspiracy to possess or distribute marijuana. The Mississippi Bureau of Investigation says the men were arrested after a search warrant at 413 Idlewild Road. The drugs seized in the operation worth about $40,000 on the streets. Bond for Dumas was set at $50,000, $45,000 for Harris. The Lowndes County Narcotics Task Force and U.S. Postal Inspectors assisted in the arrest. Starkville police are investigating an early Sunday morning shooting at the Starkville Sportsplex that left two people with minor injuries. Officers responded to the sportsplex just after midnight to reports of shots fired outside of the building. Two people had nine life-threatening gunshot wounds to the lower part of their bodies. Police say there was a private party going on at the time of the shooting and SPD officers were actually working security inside. So far, no arrests have been made. If you have any information about the shooting, call Golden Triangle Crime Stoppers. An argument leads to gunfire and a pursuit on a busy Calhoun County Highway. Now 25-year-old Taboris Bobo is charged with two counts of attempted murder, child endangerment, and felony fleeing. Sheriff Greg Pollan says the argument started between three people, Bobo, the mother of his child, and another man. Everyone left the scene. Uh, a chase started between the victims and Bobo. Pollan says that's when at least one shot was fired on Highway East, Highway 8 East, that is. Investigators believe Bobo's child was inside the vehicle with him when the gunfire happened. It's hard to keep it between the lines if you don't have your eyes on the road. We have more on how the Highway Patrol is trying to send that message to drivers when we come back. Welcome back. It is the leading cause of death on the nation's highways, distracted driving. The Mississippi Highway Patrol has seen these fatalities firsthand. Yeah, now Troop F of the Mississippi Highway Patrol is putting its foot down to make others put down their phones. WCBI's Parker King visits New Albany this morning. He joins us in the studio with more on this. Parker. That's right, guys. While texting was one of the main concerns, other forms of distracted driving are being tackled by patrol officers in their new initiative, 
under 40. You wonder why did this person run off the road and why did this single vehicle wreck occur and the reason being it's the cell phone, it's this modern day umbilical cord. That's only part of senior trooper David Snyder's presentation on distracted driving. Snyder's personal experience is what Troop F superiors wanted all of their officers to hear. He has a unique story about stats and numbers and a personal story that uh, kind of ties it in with what we're trying to do. In this case, it was his wife, you know, was actually killed. One of those numbers was his wife. Trying to make the point that it's not just a number, that it is somebody's family or loved ones. This presentation kicks off Troop F's under 40 initiative, a number District 4's fatality count has gone over for the last three years. One is too many. We, uh, we take it very serious, our job, and that's, that's what we do every day. We're out there to reduce these injury wrecks and reduce the number of fatalities. While texting is the main concern, Snyder says it's far from being the only threat to drivers. Cognitive or physical or visual distractions, auditory distractions. So when you think about, you know, kids in the back seat for a mom driving, you know, a family of children or uh, just having something on your mind and, and being, you know, distracted that way or overtired or sick. You know, here it is flu season. I mean, there's so many different types of distraction. But Captain Chad Moore hopes this testimony and this new initiative will help make Troop F's area a safer place to drive. Just like I said, I just want to hit home to them that, that these are people, actual people, and we, we want to be a little more aggressive with this distracting driving. Now, a 2016 Huffington Post survey ranked Mississippi as the second most dangerous state to drive in. Troopers hope initiatives like this will move the state down in that chart. Clear and colder later tonight. We're down into the mid to upper 20s. Maybe some spots getting wind chills down into the upper teens. More sun tomorrow, though. The latest is next. Our first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. It is great to see you on this Monday evening. A roller coaster ride up and down we go. Several cold fronts coming our way, so we will be warmer on ahead of them, a little bit cooler behind it, and then we'll have some rain chances with those fronts. Now, the outlook is in for early February, perhaps a chance at lower than average temperatures, and it looks like that is in the forecast for the first part of February for us as we get into the weekend and early next week. Right now, we do have temperatures falling. We were back to around 60 in some spots today. Now, some of you already down into the upper 30s. We will continue to cool later tonight, down into the mid to upper 20s across our area and really across all of North Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, so we will continue to cool on down. Now, those winds are gusty now. They'll relax a little bit later on. Here's our Alpha Insurance time lapse from Vernon, Alabama today. Oh, man. I went by too fast. The moon was coming on up there at that time lapse. He can't see in the time lapses when there's no clouds out there. All right. We have the full super blue blood moon tomorrow. We've been talking about this. This is tomorrow night, early Wednesday morning. The lunar eclipse will begin at 458. It will be at total eclipse at 651 when the moon sets on the western horizon. So if you are up early Wednesday, this is not tonight, this is Wednesday morning. If you're up early Wednesday, if you look west, we should be clear and you should see a big orange ball. That is the moon that will be going down about uh, 6.51 in the morning. All right, we have some clouds coming out into the region right now. We've had a little boundary move on through the rain, the snow to our northeast. We don't have to worry about that. We're looking at 
A pretty nice day tomorrow. Temperatures will top out in the mid to upper 40s, but it will be on the cooler side in the morning, as we just mentioned. Upper 20s, sunny all day long. Winds from the northwest to north at about 5 to 10, maybe up to 15, but not as gusty as where they are right now. High pressure scoots off to the east tomorrow evening, and then we'll start to see southerly winds here on Wednesday. So we should be clear Wednesday morning for the eclipse of the moon. And then another front comes in into the picture as we get into Thursday. We can go with a 50% chance for rain showers with that. Warm out ahead of it, low 60s. We fall back into the 40s on Friday. Friday night, we fall back into the 20s. So we have this up and down pattern here. 54 increasing clouds, but dry on Saturday. Rain showers again on Sunday. Temperatures fall back down into the 40s. So pick your day, pick your favorite temperature. That's what we have for the next seven days. All right, thanks, Keith. A pump repair and temporary outage are forcing a boil water notice for residents in Noxubee County. After today's repairs, Parks Utilities is advising customers to boil water until further notice. Residents in Webster County have a little better news. The uh, boil water notice has been lifted for all customers of the Slate Spring Water Association there. All right, the Bulldogs are undefeated, but that simply isn't good enough for Vic Schaefer. More from Hell State Hoops next in sports. WCDI Sports with Tom Ebel is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. Mississippi State improved to 22-0 on the season, 8-0 in the SEC, and 2-0 against their rivals from Ole Miss. But you wouldn't know it from Vic Schaefer in the postgame. Schaefer was very critical of his team's mental toughness in the second half against Ole Miss, saying his team isn't built to win championships if that area doesn't improve. Two things would keep us from winning the championship. Leadership and maturity. Leadership and maturity. That's where I am right now with this team. We are lacking in both. And it won't happen. There's no sense in sugarcoating it, acting like it. It ain't going to happen until we can get over it and learn that leadership and maturity are what the, is the key to victory and winning a championship. But that's where we are right now. I feel like us as a team, I ain't going to say everybody, we kind of responded in a negative way, and I feel like that comes with maturity. We need to just grow up. I know I had a... I had a little attitude and I showed it on my face and I tried to get out of it in the fourth quarter and just smile a little bit. But I feel like it comes from maturity where our team just got to grow up and just buy into what he's saying. Bulldogs head to Missouri on Thursday, but for Ole Miss, Matt Insel says his team is one of the best 32-minute teams in the country. But the Rebels haven't been able to put a full 40 minutes together. Yesterday against the Bulldogs, a miserable start crippled the Rebels. Four points in the first quarter, 6% shooting. But Ole Miss played tick for tack against MSU the rest of the way. The Rebels have played in plenty of close games, but Insel knows close games don't count in the win-loss column. As I keep telling them, we're 1-7, but it's not that bad. Um, obviously, the 1-7 is not good. Um, we don't want to be there, but it's not as bad as it looks or seems. We're, we're, we're very close, and um, we played a tough stretch of games. We played against a, a lot of tough teams here. We'll get it right. We'll get it right. I, I can promise you that. There's no quit in me. There's no quit in my staff. And there, and there for sure no quit in those kids in that locker room. And anybody that's watched us know that we'll bounce back. And they'll bounce back from that. I challenged them at halftime. I thought they played really well in the second half at times. And um, after the first quarter, it was, um, you know, it's just it's, it's back and forth. Ole Miss is home against Vanderbilt on Thursday. Former Ole Miss linebacker C.J. Johnson rejoins the EMCC Lions, this time as the defensive line coach. Johnson replaces Deverne Williams, who was hired as D-line coach for Tennessee Chattanooga. Johnson was a defensive graduate assistant for EMCC in 2016 and spent the past season as a defensive graduate assistant with Lane Kiffin at FAU. So here's a little bit of a weird one for you. A week of the Super Bowl, Wallet Hub released its best and worst cities in America for football fans. And Jackson, Mississippi was ranked dead last. 241 of the 241 cities that were listed. Of course, it's based off 21 metrics, about 100 other things that are based on this. But Jackson was worst, ranked worst? I mean, I don't know about that. One of the factors was college football. I'm like, well, you got State, Ole Miss, yeah. Alabama's a little bit up the road, mm -hmm. but 
What hmm. are you going to do? Jackson right there. Jackson State right there. Jackson yeah. State yeah. right there. There's plenty of football in Mississippi. But Seems yeah. like somewhere in like Wyoming or Montana where there's not an NFL team That's within what a, I would a day's drive. Well, we're somewhere in like upstate New York somewhere covered in snow. I don't no. know. I don't know. South Dakota. Maybe one of those. They didn't ask us, though. They didn't. They did we not. weren't involved. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Not at all. All right. Stick around with us. We'll be right back. All right, here's our seven-day forecast. We're looking at a lot of sunshine here. Forties tomorrow, a little bit cooler though. Still pretty nice. 59 Wednesday, so there's an up and down pattern. Rain showers likely Thursday, colder again, but sunny on Friday, and then more showers Sunday. We could definitely use that rain. We had several grass fires around. Mm -hmm. the we can, and actually Columbus, we're down. For the month, over three inches. So any raindrop is welcome at this point. The drought conditions continue. All right. Mm -hmm. So be Indeed. careful with the burning. Yeah. The sun is burn. nice, but we could use the rain. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Keith. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Have a great night.